Hey guys, and welcome back for another video. So, about a few weeks ago now, we got a new map, we got some new story, but most notably, we got ourselves a new mount. Well, the story was pretty good too, but I mean, for me, the, the mount really takes the show here. Now, if you've been following the game or you saw the most recent trailer for this release, then the mount being added is no surprise to you. But hey, now that mount's actually in the game, so let's talk a little bit about the Roller Beetle and how to get started unlocking it. Now, when I was talking about the Roller Beetle coming into the game, when I was reviewing the trailer that it was announced in, I was really afraid that we were just going to get another Arene-based Living World Season 4 Episode 3 Mastery. Up until now, all of the Masteries have more or less just been some kind of new ability that we pseudo acquire through Arene's friendship somehow, and I just felt like a mount would be terrible if they added it to the game under that system. And I'm happy to say, guys, that now that I've unlocked this thing, it's actually got its own mastery line with several new abilities to unlock, and it's a full-fledged mount just like all the other mounts that were released in Path of Fire. Another huge worry I had was that maybe this Roller Beetle mount wasn't going to be enough of an individual, and I say that because most of the mounts that are available right now have some sort of niche. The Griffin obviously flies, we have the Springer mount that can jump really high, the Skimmer that can go over water, you get it. And especially when you take into account the trailer footage that was presented to us, the Roller Beetle seems like it's really, really fast, and I was worried that maybe this mount was just gonna bypass all other land mounts in terms of speed at the very least. Now while I can confirm that this is most certainly the fastest mount, that doesn't mean that it's so broken that it replaces any of the others. For starters, when you first mount up, you actually start with zero endurance. If you've played around with the other mounts, then you know that this is kind of a standalone thing. All other mounts start with a full bar of endurance so you can use their ability. But for the Roller Beetle, our ability is a huge boost to our speed and it would be kind of broken to start off with that much potential speed right when you mount up. So instead for the Roller Beetle, the first few seconds are spent going at a normal speed but don't be discouraged by that because you can actually gain speed just by going down a hill. Anytime you're on your roller beetle and you're moving downward or down a decline, you're going to gain some speed, and likewise, you're going to lose speed anytime you go uphill. After a few seconds of rolling around, you are going to get that full endurance bar, and you can use that for a boost to your speed, or if you're headed uphill and you can feel yourself slowing down, you can use that as a means to sort of negate that as an obstacle. And speaking of obstacles that are then negated by this mount, if you're moving at a fair speed, you can pretty much not worry about any of the obstacles in the terrain because the roller beetle is gonna glide right over. Things like little deviations in rock formations that would otherwise stop your mount from moving forward, you're gonna roll right over. And if you have enough speed, you can even skip across the top of water, but just for a little while. This by no means replaces the skimmer mount, but if you have a short distance of deep water that you need to traverse, and you happen to be moving fast enough to do so, you can use the roller beetle in that situation. And this is just the basics of the roller beetle mount. I do intend to cover this as more of a review video in the future once I've got all the masteries unlocked and I've seen how it performs in other maps, as well as some of the new maps. I'll be curious to see how well it's supported in future releases. And the reason I even talk about all of this in the extent that I have is because for the rest of this video, we're gonna be doing the first collection for the Roller Beetle. And I wanted to make sure before we talk about how to get this Roller Beetle, you know what you're actually unlocking. But with that being said, to get started on unlocking your very own Roller Beetle mount, you're first going to need to have the newest Living World episode, of course. That'd be season four, episode three. If you're watching this out of curiosity now, make sure that you log into the game and unlock that so you don't have to buy the Living World episode later on. And not just owning the content is enough, you're also going to have to complete the Four Armed is Forewarned story step. Completing this will relocate one of the story NPCs known as Gorik, and Gorik is your guy as far as unlocking this mount. In the domain of Korna map, we need the Allied Encampment Waypoint, 
And just north of the waypoint, past a few buildings, you should see a wooden tent structure. And just inside of that tent, you'll see Gorik, Blish, as well as a roller beetle named Petey. Make sure you talk to Gorik to go ahead and start the first collection required for unlocking this mount. And for the first collection, we really just need to track down some secret stashes scattered around the domain of Korna. There are nine stashes total and can be found in clumps of three, so we'll be attacking these three at a time. From the Allied Encampment Waypoint, head northwest towards the Orange Sands. As you make your approach, it's a good idea to use the trail or path as a guide. Just to the right of that path, you should see what looks like a large boulder on your map or mini-map. And it's right at the base of that boulder that you can find your first secret cache. From here, start heading northeast towards the farmlands. You can use your Springer Mount to get over some of the cliff sides. Go ahead and pass the farmlands itself. And just to the right of those farms, you should see a Palawa Joko statue. And just at the base of that statue, you'll find your second cache. From that second location, just head north up the path until you reach a small town. Start approaching the buildings and on your right hand side, just behind one of the fence structures in a pile of rocks, you should see your third cache. For our next three caches, head over to the Epismic Grounds Waypoint. Head north from the waypoint following the trail until it just about dumps out into the large sand dune area and right there, you should see a couple of dilapidated buildings next to some larger boulders and some shrubs. And it's right here on the right hand side that you should be able to see a secret cache. Head back to the Epismic Grounds Waypoint. And if you look on your map just to the right of the waypoint, you can see a little piece of outstretched land. And it's actually right at the tip of that piece of land that you can find your next cache. Still right at the water's edge where you found your last cache, head south until you can begin heading east around the large landmass on that side. Looking at your map, you may also notice a bit of discoloration in that chunk of land, and where you see that it's darker, you can actually just traverse that on foot or with one of your mounts, and it's right where that starts to touch the water on the other side next to a rock that you'll find your cache. For the final three, head back to the Epismic Grounds Waypoint and begin heading north. Again here, we're heading towards some orange sands. Right where the dunes hit those orange sands, you should see two kind of rock formations, one on the left and one on the right. Head straight up through these two rock formations, but before you pass the one on the left, be sure to head left and next to some broken down buildings, you should see another cache. From there, just head directly northeast towards the closest pile of rocks you can, and near those rocks you should see some more broken down buildings, and just inside the rubble you should see another cache. From here, just head west towards the body of water, make sure that you're on the northernmost part of that water, and once you reach the water's edge, you can just follow it down until you see a large bush, and you'll find your last and final secret cache. With all of the item collecting out of the way, just return to Gorik and make sure you talk to him to continue on to part two of this collection. There are three parts in total, the second of which I feel to be the most complex, and that's what I'll be talking about in my next video. Anyway guys, to anybody out there curious about the roller beetle mount, I hope this was somewhat informative. I know I don't have all the masteries to cover just yet, but I feel like the core of how the mount actually works is just as worthwhile if you don't yet have one at all. While we won't really be touching on this until the next video, I highly recommend opening up some Korna caches while you're playing on the new map. This because you will need 50 of the new currency in order to completely unlock this roller beetle mount, and that was probably the thing that held me back from getting it the most, as I had basically none of those. But anyway guys, that's pretty much it for me. I hope this helped you kind of figure out if this is a mount you'd like to go for. And at the very least, it helped you find a couple of the caches to help get you started. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.